Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our Portuguese homestead. Uh, this week's video is going to be a bit different to our usual stuff, uh, but I need to get something off my chest. As you may know, uh, we moved onto our land in uh, Portugal in June 2019, and we started making videos about our lives here. Uh, over those past three years, uh, Lea has made a few walk and talk videos in uh, which she tr aimed or tried to explain uh, why we chose this life and what motivated us to come here. Uh, today, uh, this video is going to be my turn to tell you my story, how I, I came to choose this life and explain my aims for the future. If you're just here for the gardening videos or to fulfill your romantic living with nature itch, you might want to skip this one. I think it's important that I should explain my reasons uh, behind all this because it informs a lot of the choices we make and uh, will make going forward. Let me start by briefly summing up my uh, background. Uh, I grew up in the 90s in the Netherlands and Germany in a family of four. And I have one younger brother and my father was a journalist uh, for the Dutch television and my mother worked as a primary school uh, principal uh, for most of those years. All in all, I had a pretty privileged and happy childhood. The first cracks in my ignorance slash happiness started to appear when I took on a part-time job as a mailman, uh, servicing the less fortunate areas of The Hague. I uh, saw a lot of poverty and homelessness uh, during my uh, working hours on the streets in the early hours of the day. Um, and I was told that shouldn't or didn't exist in the Netherlands uh, because it's a rich country, you know? Two examples of what I saw and that still, still spring to my mind are of a girl my age going through the trash um, to find food and having to get used to step over sleeping people to get to the mailboxes to deliver letters. Another thing that really made a big impact on my views is that I experienced how my older colleagues went from being government employees with a respectable social status to being treated like overpaid burdens after the postal service was uh, privatized. I remember quite vividly the day they had to endure the biggest insult in my opinion, uh, when they were forced to deliver pamphlets to recruit their replacements. This was the only time I didn't fulfill my mailman duties and uh, threw all those pamphlets into the recycling. Looking back at this moment, this was a moment that I chose a site in the class war and it, I chose the site of the working people. I went on to study global challenges at Leiden University College where I focused on politics, diversity and integration. Climate change was the common thread in all global challenges I read about. This is also where I met Lea. The more I learned about the inner workings of the political process and its institutions, the more I realized it wasn't set up to deal with huge and all-encompassing issues such as climate change. Even the most pro-climate movements in politics don't dare address the elephant in the room for fear of losing their support. We all need to drastically change the way we live. Merely changing our energy source from fossil fuels to renewables is not going to cut it. What's necessary is to actually decrease the amount of energy we use. This means no more ordering stuff on Amazon that's flown all over the world. No more parties in Bali. We've been spoiled over the last two and a half centuries with relatively easily accessible energy sources and we've gotten used to the possibilities they have given us. So we must now deal with the fact that our future will have fewer of those possibilities. And that isn't a story that will get you a lot of votes. The things that are politically feasible will never be enough. Or are instantly pushed off the priority list at the mere suggestion they could impact economic growth. All that's left is that people are made to feel guilty for taking a shower. During our studies, we learned that our leaders wouldn't be able nor willing to address the climate change in a meaningful way. So there we were. We both had finished our masters and started our first jobs after university. Paying out of our asses in rent for a damp, cold ground floor apartment in Haarlem and a massive student debt. My job required me to travel all over the Netherlands in my lease I go because working from home wasn't as widespread BC before COVID knowing I was adding to the problem of climate change. 
I hated myself for that. And I also hated all my co-workers who th seemed to think that their trivial problems were way more important than the fact we were heading straight for an ecological collapse. I knew I wouldn't last long before I would end up with a burnout. In order not to go nuts, I had to let go of the naive thought that my actions could somehow save the world from collapsing and focus on my direct environment where I do have agency for change. After two years, our contracts came up uh, for renewal and with Puck on the way, we decided this was the moment uh, to change our lives and build a life more in line with our ideals and that would prepare us for the inevitable collapse. It wasn't an option to stay in the Netherlands because it is way too expensive and at the risk of bursting the Dutch bubble of invincibility, the Netherlands will flood. We first considered Wales as a place we could possibly move to. We had lived in Aberystwyth for a year during my masters um, and uh, it's a really lovely place. However, the uncertainty of the fallout related to Brexit made us decide against it. Next, we looked at Eastern Europe because land is cheaper there but we soon realized it wasn't an option either because we've read history books and unfortunately that area has way too many mentions. So finally, Portugal. Uh, Portugal turned out to be the best and safest bet. It being the safest country in the world that's not an island, uh, like New Zealand and Iceland. Uh, and we've been there in the past on holiday and we, so we knew what we could expect. We bought an old camper van because that's by far the best way to travel with a baby and headed that way to see if we could find a place to call our own. Uh, we ended up in uh, Castelo Branco after a year of traveling in central Portugal searching for a place close enough to amenities like a school and a supermarket uh, but also far enough away from neighbors so that we would, wouldn't feel like we would annoy them with our presence. Everything seemed to fall into place. Sure, there were quite a lot of hippie types in our foreigner community, but to each their own. And they also seem to think about uh, sustainable ways of living and they proclaim to uh, think community uh, was important. Uh, so um, yeah, that's all good. But then 2020 started to rear its ugly head. Slowly, we realized that those people who constantly talk about the importance of community were unwilling to do their part to protect that community. They didn't want to be part of a community if it meant that they had uh, to temporarily give up some individual freedoms to sit in a sweat lodge or if it would affect their right to party. The virus was even deemed to be fake and uh, no one we spoke to wanted to get the vaccine. I got blocked on Facebook by <laughs> quite a lot of people for speaking out in favor of getting the vaccine. and. I, and it really discouraged me to interact and associate with the, the foreigner community here. To add insult to injury, uh, the COVID lockdowns have motivated uh, more people to move away from cities uh, to places like this. And they're not sending their best. This place has seen a huge influx of people I have started to refer to as COVID refugees, i.e people who say they fled from their tyrannical governments that ordered them to wear a mask or stay home for a while just to stop the virus from spreading. There's always been a subset of foreigners that move abroad because they are fleeing their uh, governments in their home countries, but they usually shut up about it. Lately, pretty much every new foreigner I've met will refer to COVID as their main reason for moving out here. And not because they thought Portugal had such an, a good uh, vaccine program, which it did. It is really eerie to hear the same conspiracies, uh, theories and uh, pseudo profound spiritual bullshit all over again and contrast, contrast that with the conversations I have with Portuguese people who pretty much all have been uh, vaccinated, boosted and often still wear their mask, although the, the mandates have long been over. It made me realize that the locals still living here are clearly the ones who know how to live in times of collapse. As they have unfortunately already seen their communities decimated over the past decades and I hope one day to become as resilient as they are. To achieve that goal, I have still quite a lot to learn. From how to take care of my olive trees and the land to how to keep my machinery up and running. In short, I need to build a skill set that is valuable in this context. 
there's no value in becoming a yoga teacher or permaculturist around here because if I throw a rock in any direction I'll hit a dozen of those. I also don't want to rely on an endless stream of volunteers to keep this place running as many others do in, around these parts. I think it's exploitative, unsustainable and it ne also negatively affects the local economy. Especially if you let volunteers help with harvesting your olive trees, because people get paid for that sometimes. The price we pay for this is that things progress slower and it's more work. But we're still young and we have the time. It is important to us that we are able to gain these skills now and make do with what we have and what we can find around here locally. I'm afraid that it will not be possible to rely on the global trade network in the way we do now, because it is very fragile and reliant on cheap oil. I often think about that story we were told as children in which two people had to carry a heavy load from point A to point B, and they could either choose to make the load lighter or become stronger themselves. I intend to make myself stronger, instead of constantly finding ways to make the load lighter. This is not to say I'm making things harder on purpose or that I'm never going to find ways to make the load lighter. But when we do lighten our load, I want it to be done in a way that is future proof. So it will work whatever happens. And I know that that's going to be a tougher journey and it may not be a straightforward path, but we are heading in that direction and we keep heading in that direction. It also means that we sometimes choose solutions that aren't aesthetically pleasing. But they are the solutions that I can do myself, that I can easily be maintained and adjusted or added onto in the future as my skill set improves or widens. I also accept it that going off grid would entail a lot of work and that I would, wouldn't have the time to sit around all day or party every weekend. I also accept it that I had to do work that I don't particularly like at times because it makes money and that finances our lifestyle. I mean, we all have to do this, but somehow I feel some people need to hear this. My aim is to stay here until I die. I want to raise my uh, children in this community and I hope to give them the confidence and skills to deal with whatever is coming. I think my children are also a constant reminder to myself that despite my doomerism, I can't shrivel down and give up. But instead, I am motivated to get up early and build our place in a way that will give them a good base to continue the work if they so choose. I also want them to get an ed education despite the flaws that exist in any class-based system. I also don't want to force them to take over or do the same as I do. All I can do is show and tell them what it has brought me and why I'm doing it this way. If they choose to do something completely different, that's up to them and I'll support them in whatever they will want to do. Sending them to school is the only way for us to give them that option because there they will learn the language and social skills they'll need to function in this society. After all, it was our choice to move off grid, not theirs. So. Is there some sort of conclusion I can draw from my ramblings and experience of living uh, this lifestyle for the first couple of years? Yes, I learn a lot, but uh, I think that after three years on or here on the Campo, I start to see that there are some people who take this life seriously and try to make it work for the long term. But there are also loads of people who are just here to live out some sort of escapist fairy tale, seeking some fake ass uh, spiritual enlightenment or uh, to take advantage of those who couldn't afford a ticket to India to get grifted the old fashioned way. I've decided that I want and need to be part of that first group. Which means I can't spend my time and energy on those people who are here to LARP as enlightened crystal ball gazers. The fucking world is dying and that's no time to sit around and ponder whether you're unhappy because your chakras weren't aligned that one time. I know I'm not there yet and I have still way more to learn, even more than I've already learned in the past three years, but I know I'm on the right track because I can start, start to see the positive impacts this lifestyle is having on me, my family and the land I have been fortunate enough to be able to call my own. 
Abraço a meus amigos e foda-se Jeff Bezos. Thank you, uh, person who is still here listening to this. Uh, thank you for sticking with me. Um, it's a really re a big relief to get this off my chest. And uh, I hope to see you next week for a normal video. Bye.